season two really introduced the whole idea of stunt casting, wherein we cast Peter Coyote and Madeline Kahn. They were terrific in very original roles, Romney Penhallow and Pigeon Plumtree. <laughs> Perhaps now you'll speak to me. Oh. Oh. Eddie! Ah! Eddie! Ed Hetty! Ed Hetty! Mr. Ken Hallow, help her! You idiot! She speaks! A miracle! You must be, be drunk! On this godforsaken Isle of Temperance, hardly likely. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm having a great time. I mean, it's it's. I'm not going to return my money, but it does seem unfair that I'm getting paid for it. I'm really having fun, and uh, it's always hard to do everything. It's long, long hours, and it's disjointing in your life, but. Uh, they couldn't be better circumstances, couldn't be nicer people, couldn't be a better crew, couldn't be a better director. And they've treated me beautifully. I really like the spirit here. It's very much like England. Just working actors doing their best. So this is Rose Cottage. Oh, what a perfectly dear little place. So cozy, so teensy tiny. However do you all fit in such an infinitesimal little space? <laughs> Now, which of you two adorable girls is my cousin Sarah? Let me see. You. I'd know you anywhere. You shine like a beacon in the night, dear heart. Come, dear child. Come kiss Cousin Pitchy Poo. Uh. Pitchy Poo. I think Michael York was terrific as Captain Crane and he had a kind of a larger-than-life personality and he, he played the character as this kind of eccentric lighthouse keeper with a Dorset accent and he was very serious about it. So we kind of followed his lead and we went where he went with it and then, um, you know, then all the backstory began to develop around Captain Crane just because York had put such a strong imprimatur on the character. I ain't going with him. He lied about the ring. Said it was Mom's. I, I should never have brung you here. I wish you'd rotted in jail. Hear me, lad. I were there when your when your mom died. I stood by your bed watching her fade away. I was asked to do this part out of the blue, and it seemed like uh, an oasis in the desert, a real family show with kind of wonderful values, good old-fashioned values where the whole family could sit around and all enjoy it. And I wanted to have some, something to show my grandchildren. It's an old coin. Looks like gold. Yeah, let me see. It's always nice to play something which is against the perceived type. I mean, this is every actor fights against this curse. You're perceived in a certain way, and you spend your whole life in a rather neurotic way trying to fight your way out of this pigeonhole or out of this kind of image. I was delighted when someone asked me to do something that was, that was different. It scared me, I must say, playing it. In a sense, the show is not a fairy tale. It's very, very real in, in many respects, and you know you can relate real life to it. I think it's a very, very good formula. There were challenges in writing for larger-than-life performers like that, and still trying to integrate their stories into the ensemble cast. Acting is very much a family tradition. With diverticulitis and vertical, I have no doubt. I think the, the cast found it a little bit disorienting that all of a sudden these other performers were jettisoned in from California and, you know, we rotated the whole schedule around them and um, it, it was an obstacle, but it sort of gave an imprimatur to the whole series over time and, and it was something 
that even though it was a huge creative challenge, it was fun as well. It was fun to see eccentric characters play out on, on the Avonlea tapestry. <laughs> Ha ha ha!